Kerbal Classroom. Welcome to class. Today's lesson is thrust to weight ratios. At class, I wanted to show you some stuff about thrust to weight ratios and how to build rockets that you know will get off the pad. So, when you're building a rocket, first you have to have, you know, a part and then Let's uh let's get this one. And then you know, some some fuel and an engine. Well, you never know without understanding a little bit more about the uh rocket parts if the thing that you're building is going to be able to actually go up. So, uh I want to show you a uh feature in the vehicle assembly building. If you click this top left button and you click sub assemblies, you can actually drag parts. Um, I'm going to name this uh, Tiny Swivel. Save it. And then if I click Tiny Swivel, now I can bring it back. Okay, so now you understand, and I can also delete that. Now you understand how I'm getting a lot of these parts that I'm about to show you. I'm going to open up a part called Payload. So when you're building a rocket, the whole point is you want to get a thing up in the air and then in the s into space. So the thing that you're trying to get into space is called the payload. I have a reaction wheel, a um, 200 unit electric uh, battery, four solar panels, and a Stay Putnik satellite probe. Um, I don't have an antenna and I did all my math ahead of time with, without an antenna so I'm not going to put one on there. Um, but let's say we have uh, this engine. How do we know if it's going to get off the pad? So first we need to know two things. One is how much uh, thrust at atmospheric uh, sea level um, the engine can put out. In this case it's 16.875 kilonewtons. A Newton is a unit of measurement named after Sir Isaac Newton that basically says force equals mass times acceleration. So uh, how much uh, mass you can push in um, with a, an ex a certain amount of uh, acceleration, combine those two things, that's, that's a Newton. And then we have over here, uh, at the bottom right, uh, if you left click on this little uh, sprocket and ratchet um, then uh, you can see the number of parts you have and the mass also the size uh, so my mass is 1.130 tons and uh, my thrust is 16.875 and if I look uh, on the wiki for Kerbal Space Program I can find that the um, the amount of gravity at Kerbin sea level is 9.81. And here is the thrust to weight formula. Force divided by mass times uh, gravity, or this number, and that tells you a ratio of how much you're going to be going up versus down. Um, and you want that number to be one or greater if you want to get off the pad. Really, it has to be above one. So uh, the force that you want to fight gravity, gravity is this red one, uh, is this uh, green one. Uh, and when you combine the two, you basically are subtracting gravity from the upward force, uh, this green one, and you get your total force going upward. Now, if you rotate your ship at all, uh, gravity is still pointing down, and your arrow will be pointing kind of sideways. And so if you start to tilt on the pad and you have a really close to, to one thrust to weight ratio, um, you're actually not going to be providing all the thrust straight down to fight gravity and you will continue to fall over and, and blow up. So let's do some math. If we have this particular ship, it has uh, four Oscar B fuel tanks which each have fuel in them and a spark engine. It weighs 1.13 tons. That happens to be this particular engine. Um, here's the thrust, here's the mass, and 
Uh, let's fix the gravity to point to the right thing. And apparently refresh my page. Okay, so gravity is now this. The thrust to weight ratio of this particular engine, when it is full of fuel, is 1.5 at the pad. Now if you want to, uh, you can just round gravity to 10 and uh, you can get a rough calculation by saying take this number divided by 10 and then put it over this number. So 16, uh, make it into 1.6, divide by 1.1 and you have 1.49. So that's a nice clean way to figure out gravity, uh, you know, just round it up to 10 and uh, you'll get roughly the, the number you, you're looking for. You need it to be over 1. Uh, the sweet spot is kind of between 1.2 and 1.9 or something like that for uh, getting into orbit. Starting off with too much thrust, you're going to be fighting a lot of, uh, a lot of aerodynamic forces, uh, wind pushing back on you. So if you, um, if you plan a thrust to weight ratio around 1.5, it's actually a pretty good setup. So let's let's compare that to a empty version that weighs 0.35 uh, five tons and has just a tiny bit of liquid in it. That would be this particular engine. So as we get to the peak of uh, running out of fuel on this thing, it will have roughly five gravities of uh, thrust going upward, or 50 meters per second per second. Now if we have another uh, ship, this uh, full swivel, both these guys are full, it weighs 10.63 uh, tons, and it has 167.96 uh, uh, kilonewtons of thrust from that swivel engine. Here's the 3.01 tons. No, I'm looking at the empty one. This is the one we're looking at. Uh, so it has 1.6 for its thrust to weight ratio. Remember, uh, B3 divided by uh, C3 divided by D3. Okay? And if you do the rough calculation, it's 1.5. And if we take the empty version of this guy, where it is just about to run out of fuel, so we're launching it up up in space. Um, it's going to be down to 3 tons, and it will get up to 5.6 thrust weight ratio. So as you're getting up, up, up in the air and you're having less air to fight, you're going to actually have more acceleration during that time, which is great. So that's why if you start off with 1.5, 1.6 kind of range of thrust weight ratio, that's fine because as you're going through the... Um, the lower atmosphere and you're fighting the the air pushing back on you you're you're doing most of your acceleration up in the upper atmosphere here's a much larger tank and really huge uh, liquid fuel uh, mainsail engine and this total thing weighs, uh, costs 26,000 uh, this has a lot of fuel in it. Let's compare that to the, uh, the Spark. Spark was 2,000 and the Swivel was 4,000. So not only is it just so much bigger, but it is uh, this one. It is also a lot more expensive. You could buy 13 of those spark engines with the four Oscar B's for the same price as this guy. Okay, so the full uh, mainsail has a uh, thrust of 1,379 kilonewtons, and it has a full tank weight uh, 78 tons. That's 1.8 thrust uh, to weight ratio. And as you are finishing burning off the engine, uh, or the, the liquid, you will be down to uh, somewhere around 8.1 uh, thrust to weight ratio. So you'll be accelerating 80 meters per second every second as you are up in the upper atmosphere 
but you know when you're creating these things you don't always want to just spend 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 you want to have a nice efficient um, engine and so having you know a small payload you could um, oh I wanted to do this you could do something like uh, put the full spark up here and go to coupling add a decoupler and like this and the total amount of weight that you added to this is not very much uh, compared to the total it went from 78 to 79 tons so the actual thrust weight ratio starting off is not that uh, different but when you drop this lower stage this guy is full and he still has plenty of thrust and plenty of fuel and he burns through fuel a lot s slower so when you're building your rockets you're going to do some combination of uh, let's put a smaller decoupler on here and then grab your full swivel and then a larger decoupler something like this you know where oh, let's bring that up a little the total weight is only 90 tons now let's go ahead and switch that to uh, right here 90 it still has a 1.5 uh, thrust weight ratio so and it's carrying two stages above it that each can push out plenty of of energy so when you're building you want to know how much thrust each of the stages does and um, now the total thing went from 26,000 to 30,000 and we can probably go about three times as fast with this whole thing than we could before let's also look um, just a little bit uh, at solid rockets so solid rockets this one is nice and cheap it is a total of 2410 and it can put out plenty of thrust uh, I didn't actually add this to the calculations because I, I started adding this later it has 250 kilonewtons the swivel only had 167.9 so it puts out um, not quite twice as much uh, force as the swivel but it is uh, very cheap uh, the thumper by itself um, here this one's 2410 and if we switch this out for the full swivel 4360 so it is you know almost twice as expensive to go with this thing versus this so why would you want to spend a whole lot more on this liquid engine if this guy can get you off the pad well the problem with solid boosters is once you turn them on you can't turn them off you have to decouple them and and uh, if they're on like a, a side stage like if we have decouplers uh, like this guy if we have them on a side stage you know they could they could fly up and and uh, and hopefully miss the payload and maybe we can recover the payload if it has a parachute or something like that but uh, the, the the liquid engines you can turn them off and turn them back on you can do a partial uh, thrust limiter um, by turning up the, the thrust with uh, control and shift and Z and X the uh, the solid boosters however you can you can change the thrust limiter in the vehicle assembly building but you can't change it once you once you leave the vehicle assembly building you can also change just like the the liquid tanks you can change how much uh, fuel it has you can change how much fuel it starts with that does reduce the cost as you can see so if you really didn't need um, it also reduces the weight let's look at that 31 tons we can bring it down to 17 or so uh, this is with three of them each each of the three are adjusted at the same time when they're in a stage like this um, yeah so if you're getting off the pad and you just want to go super fast uh, 
solid rockets are great for getting you up a lot cheaper but the problem is they're only really great for the lower stages because you want to be able to turn your engine off when you get into the orbit that you want and if you can't uh, do fine adjustment of the engine then it also makes it so that you uh, won't get as accurate of an orbit as you want um, and so here is another thing to account for when we did our calculations we said okay the gravity at uh, Kerbin is 9.81 but there is uh, two moons around Kerbin. Here's uh, the farther moon Minmus, and here is the farther moon, or the closer moon Mun. If you look at the surface gravity of Mun, it's 1.63, and if you look at Minmus, it's 0.491. So we can change our uh, our gravity in our equation to be Mun, and now you can see that our thrust weight ratio in um, in all of our uh, equations has been updated and we would be leaving MUN at a much much uh, faster rate than uh, we would leave Kerbin and if we did MINMIS we would be leaving at a much faster rate now uh, for full disclosure I do work on Office Online so I am showing off Excel Online, which is a product that my team helped create, and so uh, you know, I I do give my own products a little bit more love than competitors. Um, here is uh, oops, here is some silly engines that we can come up with. If we put this little tiny guy on here, and uh, and we put a vector engine on and save that guy. Let's let's do that. This guy has a mass of 4.693 because the vector engine weighs 4 tons. It brought that weight up a lot but it also brought the thrust up a lot. It has 936 kilonewtons at sea level in the atmosphere. Um, we can also change to this mammoth engine, which is basically four vectors, but it saves one ton instead of making it 16, it makes it uh, 15. And it has 3,746 kilonewtons and it weighs 15 tons. This guy, uh, so I did some tests earlier. If you launch this guy, uh, it will go, I think, 23 Gs, 24 Gs, something like that. I'm going to try to turn it upside down so that when I land, uh, I fall on my head. And... then we can get the official report. This is going to blow up the launch pad as well. Oh look, the launch pad is destroyed. Okay, so if we look at this, it says maximum g-force 24 g's. And let's revert to the vehicle assembly. When I calculated this, the mammoth uh, the mammoth was at 24 g's. Uh, the vector Let's try that one. I calculated about 20, uh, 18. Um, the difference here, though, is the vector is the same uh, thickness in this direction as the rest of the ship, and so it actually has better aerodynamic properties. So when you launch it, you'll see that it actually goes up much higher and faster. But it burns for longer, and so it's actually less gravities, but because it is um, more aerodynamic, it got up to 240 or so meters per second. And let's just go ahead and time warp this. And it got up to 4.1 uh, kilometers in the air. So thrust isn't everything, but it sure helps um, to have the right thrust. So we got up to 22 G's, 
which is actually more than I calculated um, from oh I think I have I think I have this off by one let's look it up vector 936 936 and the total weight is 469 469 okay so that's better so it's it's 20 here which is a lot closer to what I had um, and then here's another ship that I want to show you um, the tall swivel so this guy is the swivel engine but instead of having two tanks I put four tanks on it has a total mass of 19.63 and if I calculate it out it has a thrust weight ratio of 0.87 so it should not get out the pad when we launch it let's try and there we go we do not have enough thrust to get out the pad and we are actually tilting and tilting and tilting and like I said that thrust to weight ratio drops significantly compared to gravity as soon as you start turning let's look at see see what it says the maximum g-force we endured was 1.8 and that was because we were falling not because we were going up okay well that's all I wanted to show you today I think if you for your homework go to wiki.kerbalspaceprogram.com and look for thrust to weight ratio you will find this page which tells you about the math behind what we just learned about there's also uh, a page for Minmus and a page for Mun where you can learn a little bit more about these particular uh, moons. We're going to be going to them in a couple episodes. I think I want to show you a few more things before we get there. And then there's this cheat sheet which also has the thrust to weight ratio um, in a more concise place. Um, next time I will be teaching you about delta V or uh, the change in um, our acceleration or our velocity I mean uh, and how we can plan to get to different places in the Kerbin system by adding up the amount of delta V and I'll also be showing you a mod that does all these calculations for you for each stage it's called Kerbal Engineer Redux and we will be downloading that in the next episode thanks for watching and see you next class bye